daily driving a modern classic in today's digital world is a romantic idea. But in truth, few of us are brave enough to give up our modern cars with their perceived modern conveniences. And perhaps like me, you've got children now. So the path of least resistance, whatever makes your life easier, is likely to be what wins out. However, today I'm driving a Mark III Golf VR6 and this nearly 30 year old car, I believe, proves that a lot of the modern features in modern cars are completely unnecessary. Look, let's get into it. My name's Ben and welcome to Dad Cars. So say the words hot hatch golf to anybody and I bet the first thing that springs to mind is GTI. However, the Mark III GTI is widely considered where VW dropped the ball. The Mark III was too big and too heavy. In fact, power to weight ratio was down on the early GTIs and also gone were the classic looks, the round headlights for this far more understated looking car. But to those who dismiss the Mark III, y'all must have forgot about the VR6. This has got a 2.8 litre six cylinder producing 173 horsepower and a similar amount in pound foot of torque. First seen in the awesome Corrado. And so for me, the weight and size gain always made sense in the Mark III with the VR6. But to call this a big heavy car today is crazy. This car is narrower and shorter and lighter than the current generation Polo. Right girls, we're coming up to a national speed limit. Do you want to feel this six cylinder? There's no one behind us, it's 20 miles an hour, let's go. What do you think of that girls? Does that seem fast? Yeah. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It makes a good sound as well. This engine sounds absolutely glorious. And I've been using this car as my daily dad car for the last couple of weeks. And let me tell you, for city driving, something with these classic proportions is wonderful. Get this, the other day I actually parked this in a bay next to two other conventionally sized hatchbacks and we could comfortably open our doors and get out of the car. I know, I know it seems crazy to say that today that that's possible with all the SUVs around, but you can when you're in a car with these dimensions. But surely internal space is therefore compromised. Well, not necessarily, let me show you. Sitting in the back of a now tiny Mark III Golf as an adult, I promise you, this doesn't feel much different whatsoever to a modern SUV. Headspace is excellent thanks to the fact that the roof liner actually comes up here at the back. Leg room is ample, and because this rear bench is raised higher than the front seats, Visibility is incredible. So even for children, they can still see all around them, which is really handy and will stop them getting travel sick. Visibility full stop in this tiny car is remarkable. Sit in the back of any modern car today, particularly crossovers and midsize SUVs, and it seems that style takes the precedence over visibility. Perhaps that's why they need so many driver assisting aids. Blind spot warning lights, beeps, alerts, and collision detection. Perhaps you need all of that because the visibility in modern cars is so poor these days. And the practicality of this tiny classic proportioned hatchback doesn't stop there. Let's have a look at the boot. Mark III and Mark IV Golf boots are massive. I mean, look at this. And obviously you could take the passer shelf out as well and you'll have all of this additional space if you're going away for the weekend. And simply pop off the headrest, roll these seats forward, fold these down and it becomes a van. I've moved house multiple times using only a Golf. I can get washing machines in the back of one of these. And when you compare this level of practicality to a modern mid-size family car, which is so much bigger, I think, this puts the modern car to shame. Girls, your, your Uncle Jordan used to have one of these about 12 years ago. And his one 12 years ago was already suffering quite badly from rust. But I'm pleased to tell you that I've yet to see a single sign of rust on this wonderful standard example that I'm driving today. And daily driving this around, I'm pleasantly surprised at how much attention it gets. Thumbs up at traffic lights, people coming to speak to me at petrol stations. It seems that people who know, know that a Mark III Golf VR6 is a very cool thing. 
This is a 1996 car and the condition on the inside matches the exterior. This is a time capsule of a car, completely standard. And while on this channel, we're spoiled with a lot of leather wrapped dash cars that we review. In here, everything is plastic. I mean, the plastic on the dash is a bit squishy, but yes, all plastic. And one of the general complaints about plastic is that it takes about 500 years to decompose. But the good thing when you're talking about a vehicle which is a nice sustainable vehicle to last a long time, this dash looks completely brand new still. My Maserati with its leather wrap dash certainly shows its age more than this car, even though this is 10 years older than my Maserati. But there is leather throughout this car full leather seats and these are the perfect types of seats to use with children non-perforated leather because they are so resilient and easy to clean and the condition the smell the feel of just being with this car it does feel like you've stepped back to the 90s and i'm really enjoying using this original cassette player as well and it's got some 90s cassette tapes in the glove box but how much are these VR6s worth today? Well, I checked on Autotrader this morning and there is 13 Mark IV VR6s up for sale. And the price ranges on them sort of from two, 3,000 up to about five or 6,000. However, there's only one Mark III VR6 up for sale and it's up for 10,000 pounds. Admittedly, with half the mileage that this car has got, but this car's only on 88,000 miles. But this very car I'm driving today is the cheapest way that somebody out there is going to get themselves into the seat of a Mark III VR6 because I've teamed up with Cash Raffle with this car. They've given it to me for a month to live with, film content on, and it's up for raffle at the moment and you can purchase a ticket for just 99p. This is a guaranteed raffle, meaning no matter how many tickets are sold, somebody's going to win this on Sunday the 19th of November at 8.30. So if you would like to get your tickets for just 99p, be in with a chance of winning this very car, click the link in the description below. And if one of my subscribers wins this car and they don't live a million miles away, I will drop it to you personally myself. And the other wonderful thing about me having these cars for a month before they go to the person that wins them is that if I identify anything that needs doing, like with this car, for example, I think the synchro on the gearbox is showing early signs of needing sorting. During normal driving, there's no problem whatsoever, but taking it to the red line, going from first to second, you can't force it into second. If you do, you will get a slight crunch. And the guys at Cash Raffle have confirmed that this will be sorted ahead of it going to its new owner. So driving this near 30 year old car today, for me, it's, it's been one of the most easy cars to drive in recent memory on my channel. I drive all sorts of stuff on this channel. And from the moment I first hopped in this car, I did not have to look down at all. I know where the hazard lights are. I know where the dial is to turn the lights on, the blowers. Everything is analog intuitive and it all feels different. And it's designed so that you can operate them whilst keeping your eyes on the road. The gearbox admittedly has quite a long throw, but it's so easy to use. The clutch bite point is exactly where you would expect it to be. The steering is absolutely joyous. Now, I will admit, look this, there's no one behind me, no one in front of me, we're going 30 miles an hour, but you see, there's, there's quite a lot of wiggle room there where the car doesn't react at all. So the steering has lots of authentic feel, but it's not the sharpest precision instrument, even in period. I mean, I've driven a Peugeot 306 GTI 6 on the channel, and the steering in that is notably better than this car. But the engine in the VR6, for me, <laughs> I do prefer this engine over the one in the Peugeot. And with this being a completely standard car, it's quick to find the limitations of this suspension setup if you are going on a B-Road blast. But the important thing is, is that it communicates with you. It tells you its limitations and you can feel them a mile off. So even if you're not going particularly fast, your cheeks start hurting just because you're enjoying yourself so much and you're smiling. A modern hot hatch would absolutely crush this on a track. And if lap times are what you're looking for, then yeah, sure. Go for something modern. So what are you missing then? Going with a 30-year-old car over something modern. What, Apple CarPlay? 
Android Auto. So, well, personally, I'm quite enjoying the detox from screen time, getting in this car, and all I can do is listen to the radio or a cassette player. What, parking sensors? Well, I'm sorry, but if you can't park a Mark III Golf without hitting something, then you're not paying attention. This is the easiest car to park, and it relies on you, again, being in tune with this car. This car becomes an extension of you being more aware of what's around you, using your mirrors. And when you look over your shoulder, because this is a low down hatchback, you know exactly where the back of the car is looking out of that massive window at the back. But let's compare this to the modern Golf, you know, the e-Golf, the electric Golf, which weighs 500 kilograms more than this car and is significantly slower than this car. I think it's like at least a couple of seconds slower to 60 than this car. In fact, they've now scrapped the EV Golf and the smallest EV VW you can now buy is 700 kilograms heavier than this car and is the same zero to 60 speed. How is that progress over 25 years? But in lots of the modern cars that I drive on the channel, I find myself getting in and not realizing where the handbrake is. Is it one that just clicks off automatically? How do I switch the thing on? And when I use the indicators, you know, they don't seem to click off or click on when I want them to. Whereas everything in this car, it just becomes an extension of you. This may well be because I have personally spent a lot of time in the past driving a Mark IV Golf and I'd be fascinated to make a video with somebody who's only ever driven modern cars and the way that they're sort of set up and then get them to sit in the seat of this and see if they find it easy to operate. It might just be that I'm being old, you know, I was set up and calibrated whilst learning to drive in cars like this and that's why they feel so intuitive for me. But in all honesty, the whole time that I've been driving this car, the only one thing that I wish this had, which newer cars do, is a sixth gear you know it's only got five gears and when you're sat on the motorway doing 70 miles an hour it does feel like there should be a sixth gear and that would probably increase the miles per gallon as well which miles per gallon around town i've been getting sort of low to mid 20s and on a run i've been getting in the low 30s range which is pretty good when my maserati is averaging 15. but the one very real fly in the ointment of driving a modern classic like this as your daily particularly if you're going to be using it with your family, is safety. Because the Mark III Golf predates NCAP tests. In fact, the Mark IV Golf was the first Golf to be NCAP crash tested, and that achieved four stars. And then every subsequent Golf, Mark V onwards, has always achieved five-star safety rating. So regardless of how good and easy and intuitive this car is to drive around today, you know, the safety of it is a big concern because this was built in the mid 90s where the top selling cars were Ford Fiestas, Ford Escorts. And so common sense would say that the structure of this car was created to take the impact of an average vehicle weighing less than today. So yes, it's the growing size, growing weight of the average vehicle on UK roads, which are putting people in modern classics at ever greater risk. And look, if anybody's watching this and wondering why on earth would you even want to drive a car that's nearly 30 years old today? Well, why would you want to read a physical paper book when you can just listen to an audio book? Why would you want to make a meal from home from scratch when you can just at a touch of a button have anything you want delivered to your house? And why would you want to take all of your family out to the farm getting all muddy for the day when you can just sit them in front of an iPad and put Peppa Pig on? Well, the truth is when driving a car like this, it becomes an extension of you, an extension of the driver. You are present in the moment. You are driving this car because it was made at a time when technology very much relied on drivers driving their cars. Whereas today, you as a driver don't need to have a sense of the road through your fingertips on the steering wheel because there's clever tech now which can do that for you. And I think in a nutshell, there's technology that can take the place of almost anything today that you don't want to do. And so it seems for the masses, they don't want to be completely in tune and drive in their car. They want to hop in their car and then arrive at their destination with as much refinement as possible. So look, even if this video hasn't convinced you to forego that modern car purchase in favor of a modern classic, you know, when you go into the showroom, don't be upsold to the latest crossover or SUV. You know, go for something smaller. Because I think this tiny car proves that all of that size is simply excessive and unneeded. 
But to anybody out there like me who doesn't simply want to give up their connection to their vehicle and outsource their attention whilst driving to modern technology systems you find in modern cars, then get yourself a VR6. Look, if you enjoyed this video, make a connection to me, click the like button, comment below, subscribe to the channel. And I want to say thank you once again to Cash Raffle for letting me pick a car to have for a month, make videos on, if you would like to win this VR6. Make sure you click the link in the description below and get your tickets for just 99p. But why don't you check out the GTI 6 review that I did, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.